it. Yeah, I knew that. Wow. Okay, I've got the book of Matthew. All right. All right. What chapter? Well, let's see. How about looking in 17? Matthew 17. Right on. Okay. There's 20. There's 18. There's 17. Okay. Now, we got Matthew, the 17th verse. What? Or 17th chapter. What verse? How about looking in verse 9? Verse 9. Okay. Here I go. I'll read it. No, 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 no. What do you mean, no, no, no? We've got to prove that what you said is true or false. Yeah, I know. Well, I'm going to read it. No, 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 no. What do you mean, no? I've got to read it. <laughs> well, why didn't you say so? Okay, right there it is. And when they came down from the mountain, Jesus charged them, saying, Television to no man. What? No. Yeah, that's what it says, television to no man. Now, come on. That's tell the vision. Now, read it right. That's the way a lot of people read the Bible. They just read it to hear what they wanted to hear. Well, that's not the way we read it around here. We read it like it's written. Oh, oh. So that is, Jesus was transfigured up on the mountain in this passage of Scripture. Yeah, white as snow, his garments, yes. And when he came down, he told his apostles not to tell anybody the vision that they had seen. Oh, yeah, I knew that all along. Oh, boy. You really had me going there for a while. Oh, that's not hard. <laughs> yeah, all right. But anyway, we want to read the Bible as God's word. And take it as his word. And take it as his word so that everybody will know that Jesus loves them. Yeah, that's a cue for a song, you know it. <laughs> Just about everything we say is a cue for a song for you. Yeah, Jesus loves me, this I know, for the Bible tells me so. Little ones to him belong, they are weak, but he is strong. Yes, Jesus loves me, yes, Jesus loves me, yes, Jesus loves me, the Bible tells me so. That's right, the Bible tells us that Jesus loves all the little children. But we're not going to sing that one. We're not? No. Instead, I think you ought to sing your theme song. Oh, yeah, yeah. I sing it everywhere I go. Yes, I know that. Yeah, and I'm here. Yes, I know that. That's because I'm not all there. <laughs> well, you said it. I didn't. Yeah, I can. You can't. Oh, I see. Well, anyway, sing, the boy sing your theme song for the boys and girls, and they'll recognize it if they watch us on Tuesday afternoon at 4. Yeah. And Saturday morning at 9. At 9? You hear that, Rita? Nine. <laughs> uh, you're not going to let her forget that, are you? No, sorry. <laughs> All right. Anyway, here, oops, hey, you lost your shoe. Don't tickle my feet. <laughs> I'm sorry about that. All right. All right. Anyway, the theme song goes like this. The B-I-B-L-E. Yes, that's the book for me. Read and try and then obey the B-I-B-L-E. Bible. Hallelujah's right, boy. Keep on preaching there. Yeah. Yeah. Anyway, I don't know why you do that on the end there. Oh, you mean yell for the Bible? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I'll tell you why. Okay, why? Tickles my innards. <laughs> Tickles your innards. Makes me feel good. Oh, I see. From the top of my head to the tip of my toe, see? Oh, come on. Cut it out. All right, but it makes me feel good. All right, I'm glad it makes you feel good because we can learn all we need to know about this old world's problems in the B-I-B-L-E. Yes, sir, Jesus is the answer. That's right. Jesus is the answer to all the problems that might come our way. Yep. All we got to do is listen to his word and obey his word and give our life to Jesus. That's right. That's all we have to do. Doesn't sound like much. Well, it really isn't much until you get to thinking about what all is involved. What's involved? All of us. All of us? All of us. Everything? Everything. Even our pocketbook? Especially our pocketbook. Ah, oh, come on. Well, anyway, when we're baptized into Jesus, we need to baptize our pocketbook, too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I agree with you there. Okay. 
so that we give at least a tenth of everything that we have to the Lord's work. And a good way to start that is here at Christ's vision. Yeah, yeah. Give toward Christ's vision so that we can have good Christian television programs here in the community. And the folks from Quincy have been here to help us out. WWTJR, work till Jesus comes. And that's what we want to do. That is for sure. That's for sure. And so if you'll help through Christ's vision, both of the programs can continue and do a good work for Jesus till he comes again. Yeah, because he is coming again. He's promised. Yes, he has. You know where he's promised? Yeah, I know where he's promised. Where? In the book. No, I mean, I mean the chapter and the verse and the book and the stuff. In the book, the chapter and verse. Oh, yeah, I know where it is. Well... Boy, it takes you sometimes me to wring it out of you, you know. Yeah, yeah, well, don't wring too hard. My neck is soft. <laughs> well, let's start again, shall we? I think we ought to. Yes, I think so, too. Jesus is coming again. He's promised. Right. Where in the Bible does he promise us to come again? Now, you got the question asked. I have, and I want the answer. Okay, you guys back there, answer him. No, <laughs> I'm asking you. I'm asking you. Oh, oh, oh. Well, let's see. How about uh, uh, the Gospel of John? Sounds good. The 14th chapter? Sounds even better. The third verse? Sounds like you hit the nail on the old head. Yeah, I'm adjusting chip off the old block. <laughs> oh, boy. But anyway, what does that say? He says, if I go to prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you unto myself that where I am, there ye may be also. That's right. He's promised it himself. I will come again. Angels even said he was going to come again there in the first chapter of the book of Acts. Yeah, boy, why do you stand here watching him go up in the clouds? He's going to come back like he's going in power and great glory. That's right. He's going to come again with power and great glory. Hallelujah. <laughs> hallelujah is right. Oh, hallelujah. Well, anyway, we have an opportunity to recognize that Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life. No life without him. No real spiritual, truthful life without him. That's what I meant. Yeah, okay. I'm glad that's what you mean because I want you to tell the boys and girls here before we have to leave why I named you Daniel. Oh, you mean after Daniel, the Old Testament prophet? That's right. And I want you to tell them why I named you after Daniel. Oh, I can do that all right. All right. Because he was so, so good looking. <laughs> oh, Danny, I don't know what I'm going to do with you. I don't know what you'd do without me. <laughs> No, I guess that's about right. Yeah, and you don't know what you'd do without me either. Yeah, I guess that's right too. Yeah. So now, you, I, I, I at least had three reasons why I named you Daniel, Danny, after Daniel of the Old Testament. I want you to give me those three reasons in a way that those out there listening can understand them. You understand me? I understand you. Good for you. All right, number one. Number one, he had great faith in God. Great faith in God is right. He was he had been brought over into Babylon by Nebuchadnezzar. Gesundheit! height and what? What's the matter? Why would you say Gesundheit? height? I say that when you sneeze. I I didn't sneeze. Yes, you did. Now I was telling you about the king of Babylon who had brought the people of Israel and Daniel over into Babylon. What was his name? Nebuchadnezzar. God bless you. Well, why did you do that for? I say that too when you sneeze. I didn't sneeze. You said Nebuchadnezzar. Gesundheit. What? <laughs> Turnabout's fair play, I always say. Well, you don't have to say it here. Well, I guess. But anyway, he was the king, and he conquered the people of Israel, and brought them over into Babylon, and Daniel was one of the men, young boys, at the, in fact, that came over with the people of Israel, and he continued believing in God and stood up for God. Yes, he did. Yes, he did. He was a man of great faith. Second. He was a man of great prayer. Prayer. We want to pray right here in in Christ Vision Studio that 
people will respond and send their money down here so that we can continue to tell boys and girls to be a, a boy and a girl of prayer. Right on. Because he prayed three times every day. Really? Yes. He entered into his room, bowed down in the window facing east and prayed in the morning and afternoon and evening. He prayed for breakfast? <laughs> yeah, I guess so. That's four. All right, he prayed four times. Did he pray for dinner? Yes, I guess he prayed for dinner. That makes five. <laughs> yeah, well, okay, five times. Did he pray for supper? Come on. Well, did he? Well, <laughs> I guess he did. That's six. Yeah, that's six. Did he pray before he went to bed? Will you cut it out? Did he? Yes, he prayed before he went to bed. That's seven. He was a man of prayer, my Jiminy. Yes, <laughs> I guess I'd have to agree with you. He was a man of prayer. You bet you. We need to be so too. Yes, we need to pray every day. Pray for Christ Vision. Pray for the w WTJR down in Quincy. Pray for all the Christian programs because we need them out there on the air real, real bad. Yeah, they're not much good on there out there of Christian programming. <laughs> Sorry to say that's about right. Third one, third reason. Oh, he had great courage. That's right, he had great courage. Yeah, he got thrown into the lion's den. Yes, he did. Yes, he did. You know what he saw when he got thrown into the lion's den? Sure I do. What did he see? Lions. That's right. What do you think he'd have seen? Pussycats or something? It was a lion's den, you know. <laughs> and he saw the lion. Yeah, yeah. And they were getting ready to jump on him and eat him up. No, they weren't. Yes, they were. They had been kept hungry. And they were going to eat him up as their dinner. They weren't going to eat him up. Danny, th they were going to eat him up. Well, I hate to say it, but you're wrong. Now, I could get the Bible out and show you where they were kept hungry and they were going to jump on Daniel. Oh, okay, so far. And eat him up. There, you're wrong. What do you mean, there, I'm wrong? You don't think eat things up. You eat them down. You eat them down. Well, I got you, didn't I? I guess so. You eat them down. It's only when you get sick they come up. Oh, come on. Cut that out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Anyway, he was on the lion's den, right? Yes, sir. And they were to be his dinner. No, he was to be their dinner. Yeah, he's not going to eat them down. No, he's not going to eat them down. They're going to eat him down. No, they're not. God won't let them. Oh, I see. That's true. God was going to keep their mouths shut so they couldn't hurt Daniel. Yeah, they're going to lock up, the, lock their jaws and throw away the key. <laughs> hey, boy, throw away the key. Get it? No, uh, yeah, I got it, but I don't think that's right. Oh, yeah, lock jaw. Gave them lock jaw. Get it? Come on. He just closed their mouths so they couldn't hurt Daniel. Yeah, that's what I said. They locked their jaws. Anyway, the next morning, the king came down and looked at down in there, and he thought he was going to see a pile of bones, you know, around the lions. But he didn't see anything like that. In fact, he didn't see anything but the lions laying out and Daniel laying peacefully on, on one of the lions' mane. His, his hair on his neck? Yes, yeah, his hair on his neck. And the old king looked down there, and how surprised he was. You know what happened? Yeah, he fainted dead away. No, no, no. No, he didn't faint. He was happy. Oh, he was. He brought Daniel out of that lion's den and took him up in front of his, front of his um, throne and said, Daniel, because of your courage and your faith and your prayer life, you showed me that your God is the only true God. Yeah, he did, didn't he? Yes, he did. And, it, and the king passed another law. Another one? Yeah. He liked to pass laws. Don't you kings do that? Yeah. <laughs> but this one was going to be a good law. He says, Daniel, I'm going to make a law that says all the people of Babylon is going to bow down to your God, the true God of Israel, and listen to him. Hey, because of his faith and his courage and his prayer life. That's right. And that's why I named you Daniel, Danny, after Daniel of the Old Testament. A man of courage, a man of prayer, and a man of faith. That's right. So I think it's about time for us. We're not in our clubhouse. Hey, I was getting ready to say to club, close the old clubhouse door. So instead of doing that, we'll just um, have you sing your Daniel song. Oh, can I do that? I think you can. Can you do that? I think I can. Then I can. Oh, boy. All right, you ready? I'm ready. Here we go. Dare to be a Daniel. Dare to stand alone. Dare to have a purpose friend. Thank you, headlock jaw. Oh.
Oh, come on. Dare to make it known. That's right. We want to make our faith known to everybody. We want to be a man of faith, a man of prayer, a man of courage. Belonging to God. Take your stand for God and show it by supporting Christ Vision and Christian television so that we can tell boys and girls for Jesus. That's what we want to do. Yep. The B-I-B-L-E. Yes, that's the book for me. Read and pray and then obey the E-I-B-L-E Bible. Yay! Keep on loving Jesus, because he sure does love you. Don't forget, send your offering to Christ's vision. We will bless you for it. He will, he will. Yes, he will. So long, everybody. Bye-bye.